Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you my some of my five favorite books that I think you guys should read. So when I was making this list, when I originally compiled it, they were ended up being all historical fiction. And I was like, that can be its own separate video. <laughs> and they're all kind of World War II historical fictions. Uh, no surprise. So I try to diversify this selection. So they're kind of all over in terms of genre. There's some fantasy. There is one historical fiction. Um, just kind of general fiction as well. So yeah, these are ones that I said that are some of my favorites that I think you guys should read. So without further ado, let's get started. So starting out, this is a book that I read several years ago and I just fell in love with this writing style and it's a very haunting book and it is Town by Frederick Backman. This takes place in Sweden in a small town called Town that's like out in the forest and this town struggles financially with jobs and people are just kind of down on their luck living there but the pride and joy of this town is its junior a hockey team and so when the junior a hockey team finally makes it into the playoffs everyone is excited but the star player ends up raping the general manager's daughter and it divides the town it goes off from there like i said this book is not an easy read it does have themes of rape culture, victim blaming, and it's very difficult to read. Like the author does not hold back, but I think it's a very important read. It shows kind of the like bad side effects of kind of sports and sports culture and the like negative aspects to it and how things can be taken too far and how people's ability to, you know, push a puck around the ice rink is greater than who they are as a person like we value that more than what they are uh, which is very interesting and the writing style in here is very unique I feel like it's almost like a narration style where it's very lyrical I feel like the way I were to describe it as if it were the spirit of the town telling the story the narrator knows kind of what happens and it like references things that will happen in the future like what goes on with these people but it's like kind of all-knowing if that makes sense and it kind of jumps from like person to person within this town and it shows the interconnectedness and the webs that these small towns have and just how interconnected everyone is. It is a very haunting uh, book but I think it's one that is important for everyone to read even if you're not a fan of hockey. I know I'm from Canada so this is like I understand kind of that hockey culture but I think it can be equivalent to like football in the United States or soccer in Europe. I think it can be very much kind of similar to that but it is a very haunting book. Definitely one of my favorites. It's hard to get through but I think it's an important one that everyone needs to read. So I am a sucker for historical fictions that have a dual storyline and no this is not the World War II one. This is one that, that takes place in modern day and also in the late 1800s early 1900s and it is The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton. This is another one that I've read I want to say like six or seven years ago now. It's been a while and I just have fell in love with her books. So then I like I said this one has a dual storyline. So we follow this girl whose grandmother has just passed away and when she's going through her grandmother's grandmother's belongings she stumbles upon this old fairy tale book and she's very interested about her grandmother's history and who she was because her grandmother when she was a child was left abandoned on a ship that was coming from England to Australia. So the granddaughter goes to England to try to find out who her grandmother was and her family and we also get flashbacks to this girl that is growing up in kind of Victorian era uh, England and obviously the store two stories are connected throughout time. This one like I just loved it was so immersive again it's another one that is very heartbreaking but I think it is another one that I think you just need to dive in and just you know you know, you know your emotions are going to be <laughs> kind of tossed around, but it's worth it. And I was just so engrossed in this story. Even with the dual storylines, I don't feel like you lose a lot of momentum with the narrative. Uh, you kind of get the overarching narrative that is still kind of passing with the two different timelines. Um, so it doesn't feel very much stop and go. Kate Morton's really good at kind of weaving in the past and present storylines to make it kind of flow nicely, which I really enjoy. And I don't know, this is so heartbreaking. It does have like some good autumnal feels to it too, if you want to read it during like where the season where it's like dark and wet 
outside. I feel like that kind of has that vibe. But this is one that I feel like it's best not to know too much about. Just know the general synopsis and dive right in. But yeah, this is one. Of, I think this is my favorite Kate Morton book that, of hers that I've read and I've read all her works. So this is a book that I read for a book club that I did with my fr my lab mate and her friends. And just judging by the title, I don't think I would have picked this book up if it were just me. But I'm kind of kicking myself because I was, you know, definitely judging a book by its title in this case. But I think it is definitely one that is very important and I really enjoyed it. And it is The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abby DeRay. This follows a girl who is growing up in a small Nigerian town and her story. So she her father kind of sends her away to a husband to essentially kind of get her dowry when she's really young. So she ends up running away from this abusive husband and she ends up getting involved in kind of not almost like a slave trade essentially um, in modern day Nigeria to work as a cleaner. But this, uh, this main character, I want to say Aduni is her name. She's very optimistic. She, she really wants to get her an education. That is her one leading goal because she feels like if women are given the opportunity to go to school and learn, they can find their louding voice. And she wants to find her louding voice to stand up for girls who aren't able to do so. And this book was very, again, another heartbreaking one, but I think it's really interesting. I think it also showcases Nigerian culture in modern day, um, which I thought was really well done. And like each chapter essentially, um, or every so many chapters has like basically kind of like facts about Nigeria. So I did learn a lot about like little uh, facts there um, about Nigerian culture and its modern day um, kind of not being progressive in terms of how women are treated within that culture which I thought was a really good kind of critique on that um, but it was just another one where you just can't help but root for Aduni and everything that she has to overcome like she still perseveres through all of these uh, you know obstacles and you can't help but just admiring her perseverance and her you know just desire to get an education and again it's another one that's very heartbreaking and what is unique too is that it's written in the style as if someone is not a native like a native English speaker so it's kind of somewhat in broken English and as the story progresses her English obviously gets better it does take a while to kind of get used to that but I felt like it was a really good like element to the narration because you feel like this is actually a Dooney accounting her story recounting her story to you and yeah it was just really well done again I wouldn't have picked it up by the title but I'm glad I did for the book club because it is honestly a like amazing story it's very memorable and it's really like stuck with me even though I've read this a few years ago Next up, this is a fantasy book that I read recently. It's definitely a little bit different than what I've read, but I really loved it. Like, it definitely is one of my favorite books that I read this year, and it is Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. Um, this was, again, one of the Tales and Teacups book club picks, and I loved it. I've had this on my shelf for a while, and making it the book club pick made me be like, okay, I have to actually finally pick this one up, and I loved it. It is such a spellbounding, you know, magical book and just the way it's written is very beautiful. So this book follows Piranesi who lives in kind of this labyrinth style house and it's like has limited rooms. There's like oceans in the these rooms like it's and like statues and this goes on and on and the book is told from his journal entries. So the first part of the book is kind of him just talking about his day-to-day -day life, you know, looking at the tides and tracking that and saying hi to some of his seagull friends and like all that stuff but then there is kind of this twist that I think is best not to know what is going on and it kind of goes off from there um, but I feel like definitely it's better to not know too much about this just dive right in and this book was just so like I said the, it says here spellbounding strange and unforgettably original and I 100% agree with this. I've never read anything quite like this. It was just the themes of kind of being you know by yourself and solitary were very much kind of the main drivers in this but then there's also the subtle ones in terms of how 
like looking at our relationship to the world around us and vice versa so the world's impact on us and our impact on the world I thought was just really interesting and it definitely takes a, like a, a little bit for me to get into I felt like the first part where Piranesi is kind of describing his you know day-to-day -day life a little bit boring but once you kind of get past part two that's when it really starts to pick up and again I've never read anything like this this quickly has become one of my favorite fan standalone fantasies I just think it is really well done and I think it's just one that everyone just needs to experience dive right in lose yourself in this you know spellbounding enchanted world and it's just really heart like heartwarming too with the ending it made me really happy and like I don't know I just felt good reading this at the end because um, Piranesi even though he's very naive like you just really want to root for him he's just an amazing wholesome character I think and yeah I really like this so if you're looking for a short standalone fantasy something a little bit different then I recommend this one and lastly I saved the World War II historical fiction recommendation for last and it is Cold, <laughs> Cold, Codename Verity by Elizabeth Wine and this is a book that I read during my undergrad so it's been quite a while since I read this and this book has still stuck with me. I have two versions of this book, one that is like my original and then I wanted to get the hardback editions but like I've like annotated like different sections. Oh, what is this? There's like a leaf in here. Oh, it's like a rose petal. I guess I put it in there. I guess you learn something new every day, but there's like little annotated sections and like things that I've underlined that I just love this book. And I read it, or I listened to the audiobook version of this, I want to say like three or three years ago, three or four years ago, and I loved it just as much. And so basically this follows two friends during World War II. One is Maddie who is a fighter pilot and then she also um and also Julie who is essentially a spy and the book opens up with Julie being captured by the Nazis in Paris when she was sent there for a mission and they and Maddie was the one who dropped her off and they haven't been able the plane crashed but they haven't been able to find Maddie's body so they are asking her to recount everything so she uses this opportunity to stall time to essentially recount her friendship with Maddie and it kind of goes off from there uh, so they're kind of in like random like diary entries essentially but this book is like made me cry like I was sobbing by the end of this I think it is such an impactful novel and it really for one that is YA too I think it doesn't shy away from a lot of the horrors and it doesn't sugarcoat a lot of the you know very like the violence and uh, like carnage of World War II. Really the focal point of this novel is the friendship between Maddie and Julie and you can't help but just kind of almost like fall in love with a friendship and it kind of shows like the inseparable bonds and kind of love that we share and I really like how it kind of highlights a female friendship in such a powerful realistic way and like I said this book is definitely one of my favorites I, I like I said I have two copies and apparently I have a rose petal in here which was surprising but yeah this book is very haunting there's so many lines in here that I've just like annotated and they're some of my favorite literary quotes of all time this book I think was popular back in the day of book two but I don't hear a lot of people talk about it but it's such an amazing book it is just honestly one of my favorites and the one that I chose the World War II historical fiction that I chose to um, you know showcase in this video but yeah this is definitely hands down one of my favorite books of all time it is just honestly so amazing it's haunting it still stuck with me even though I've read this such a long time ago so that's it guys I hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below what some of your favorite books are and all of that stuff so yeah thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time Bye, guys.